Back out here live at GHA Field in Arrowhead City. Please be joined now by Mitch Holtz, voice of the Chiefs. 27 years with Lenny, is that right? 29. 29 if years. If you're keeping track Lenny. at home. so Almost almost three decades. I've seen a lot of 16 jerseys out here today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, you know, here we are. It's been an interesting 36 hours. Uh, but this third preseason game, I heard you and Dia talking about it. Don't sleep on it. There's there's a lot of big decisions to be yeah. made. Um, and so the first teamers might play a series. But still, they've got to figure out how many defensive linemen, how many wide receivers, what do they do uh, at DB, D-back, what's that yeah, breakdown yeah, look like. There's there, a thousand absolutely. things to talk about. Uh, as is always the case, and yeah, a lot of big decisions, a lot of big you know cuts to be made here in a week or so. Um, you know, we talked yesterday about how for one generation, Lynn Dawson was the Chiefs quarterback. For the next generation, he was almost the soundtrack of the Chiefs, right, on the radio, on television, on inside the NFL. That was you, right, growing up on the Smith Center Farm, right? You were Lynn Dawson in the fields pretending to be number 16. I don't want to take your um, viewers away, but at 645, they might just want to drift away for a while and listen to the open to the game because it's essentially that. Lynn Dawson, I mean, he came to your school. He signed your football. He came to your fundraiser. He brought you a Lombardi trophy. He drew plays in the dirt. He was your, for us, for my age, he was your childhood and he was your adulthood. And I said on the farm, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd watch half the game. It was the, it was that 3 o'clock game, right, on NBC uh, with Al DeRogatis and Kurt Gowdy. But then at halftime, I'd go out, take my radio, and I'd put on my stencil 16 jersey and play like a magic. My farm moved magically in a municipal stadium, and the magical idiot Raiders were out there, and I magically was Len Dawson. and I magically won every game. And then I magically for 24 years was on his shoulder with these broadcasts. What was it like? I mean, you were an adult when it happened. Were you still – Still kind of a kid, kind of a pinch me moment when you when you got the job here. And hey, here's your teammate, Lynn Dawson. My first game, I was gonna put it on Twitter. I'll I'll put the picture on. It's up in my office at home. But I filled in for Kevin Harlan actually three years before I got the voice of the Chiefs job, and I'm, I I had that feeling that day. And my bodily fluids were all going crazy, and I started to feel my eyes well up with tears. And I go, this ain't gonna work. Like I gotta back up. But but Lenny, I was in Lenny's huddle. Like I wanted about Gloucester Richardson or, or Elmo Wright because I was the guy that, hey, you're a, you're on the team today, buddy. I want to give you a 12 yard hitch route just to get you in the flow. <laughs> but he accepted me right away, and that that honestly led to what happened three years later when I became the voice of the Chiefs, and then for 24 seasons to be together. Absolutely, he accepted everybody, right? I interned under him, and I, I told stories yeah. yesterday about, yesterday about how he, he treated me probably just like he treated a, a Bobby Bell or, or, or Ed Buddy or some of those classic teammates he had he had the incredible uh, ability to make everybody feel like he was their friend and you're seeing that manifest itself right where everybody's uh, reflections on him but he was that way uh, and uh, that's a that's a gift quite honestly uh, but Len touched our lives his fingerprints are all over our lives and certainly all over this franchise Mitch, thanks for the time. We appreciate you carving some out. We'll be thinking about you and, and Dan, who came on with us yesterday, and all the uh, all the folks in the Chiefs radio network. He was a staple for so long uh, with that broadcast. And uh, like I said, we'll be thinking about you. Have a great call. I know you'll be it'll be tributes probably throughout the broadcast, right? All throughout the broadcast. And uh, again, uh, he just touched our lives. I mean, it was I. He was the seventh son of the seventh son, but weren't we the lucky ones, really? Right. Absolutely. And particularly you and I. Yeah, Mitch. Thanks so much.